It's about developing a strong vision inside and out of work. So we talked about the importance of, of um, developing that vision. Now what we're going to be talking about today is how do we take that vision, how do we take that and then actually start to apply it in our life um, with certain systems. Because we can have all the stuff rattling around in our mind, different things, but if we don't know how to put it down or if we don't put it down pen to paper, you know, which is actually the start of making that a reality, then often it doesn't have to do, but we let other people's agenda or we let life take over and then we don't get it done and then at the end of the day we feel bad about it, right? Does that make sense? So, what we need to do is we need to come up, and I talked about this before, we need to identify the few key things that if we did them every single day, it would be a good day. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That it would be a good day. So these are your non-negotiables. And there's not a thousand things, guys, that if we did them every single day, you know, there's just a this down. I'm telling you guys, you can't, I, I talked to some kids last night, my, my boys' little baseball team, which I love doing, and we were talking about goal setting and different things like that. And every, every one of them, or actually about two or three, said, yeah, I got goals, I got goals, or, you know, and I'm like, do you write them down? And that, of course, they don't write them down at that age, right? But they all had them in their head. So all these different things, see, there's certain things that are important to us in our life, but if we don't get them out of our head and write them down and really make them a priority, more than likely they're not going to happen in two or three weeks or months or six months or a year, and it's not going to be taken care of, and you're not going to feel that great about certain areas of your life, and they may not be going too well that much. So something that could take maybe yeah. 5, 10, 20 minutes at the most can sometimes really have life-impacting consequences, right? I mean, really, if, if, if you're in a relationship, okay, that's a big deal. If, if, you're, if your spouse maybe needs three or four kind words from you, or maybe just one kind word from you, and you choose not to give it to them, how long does that take? Maybe 10 seconds? You choose not to give it to them. There could be some pretty high consequences to that five, six months, eight months down the road. The type of team you have is incredibly, incredibly powerful. This really puts everybody, everything on one page for your team. You know, when you have a business, if you look up at the top right, you have to have a philosophy for that business, that team, that company, that organization, whatever it may be. You have to have a mission statement. I really believe you have to have a mission statement. You have to know what your, there's no kind of question of why we're doing what we're doing and how we serve them. Why the world needs us. We have our core values right here. Our core values, love others, listen more than you speak. Constant attitude of serving, incredible communication. You can see that. I'm not going to read all those, but you have our core values. Everything is right there on one page. So notice what we do is we have, we have the one page plan and then on the back side we have those life non-negotiables. So literally it's all there. So our team members can have this every single day. They can, there's no question. And we've identified the few key things basically that are the non-negotiables that need to get done. So I'm telling you, you can do this whatever the company is, whatever it is. So this is why I feel it's real powerful because you, what happens is you get everybody on the same page. Everybody's on the same page. There's no confusion. All your core values are here. Your team goals are up here. You know what your purpose is, right? You know exactly, depending on where you are, what are the few key things that you're supposed to get put close to God? Uh, prayer walk, devotional. And then I go over here, amazing husband, and I go QT with Julie. Okay, quality time with Julie. Okay, then I go over here, uh, incredible father. I go uh, QT with kids, and then I just write the word affirm. I just want to affirm them, give them positive words. And then I go over here and I have my real estate goal. And then I go ahead and write the one to two things that I like to be consistent on every single day with that. And then I have something here, and then right here I have super fit. I am super fit, and then what I do here is I do CrossFit, and then I write no fast food. Very, very plain, okay, nothing. Every single day I could probably do it, you can do this with your kids. Very, very powerful tool if you start to get your kids, okay, to write their goals down. And when, they're, when they see this, this is incredibly powerful. But look, they're not going to do it if, unless you're doing it. 
So it's silly to say, hey, kids, you know, just write your goals down and get it done, and then you're not writing your goals down. It doesn't work that way. So if you're not first doing it, there's no way in the world you're going to have any credibility to get your kids to do it. It's so important. Do the thing, have the power. Do not the thing, have not the power. So you guys, leave it with that. You have a choice to do these things. You have a choice to take these tools and take some time and identify your non- When you set personal goals, you got to go really deep inside. It's very easy just to come up with a number, say, oh, I want to make 150000 this year. You know, this is what I want to, want to make. Sometimes we come up with that number, we have no, no idea why we want to make that. Okay, we just say, oh, I just want to make it because it sounds good. So then we're going after something that we don't really, isn't going to bring us necessarily happiness. So I think when we set personal goals, it's, it's harder because we have to really go inside and look at actually what do I really want? What do I really want? I think what makes us happy is progress. <clears throat> we talk about that. Andy Robbins talks about that all the time. We're not really happy if we're not progressing. And really that's all that success is. So we have to be looking at the most important areas of life and just understanding are we just getting better? Are we growing? Or are we going backwards? Well, you don't, you don't stay the same, either, either going forward or going backwards. So it's really, I, I think as long as we're trying to identify and figure out how can we just get better as individuals and grow in all areas of our life, then we're gonna, feel, we're gonna feel better. And how can we contribute? I think, I think growth and contribution are two things that are so incredibly important in life. And if we, if it's, if we stop to, if we stop looking, it's like, oh, well, what can I do for, it's all about me, or what can I do for me? That's a very selfish. But if we can focus on two things, and growth, and contribution, okay? And it goes back to that Zig Ziglar thing, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll have all that you need, or, you know, as much as you want. It's that same thing. So if you focus on those two things, good things will happen to you. Uh, so just that growth and contribution. is somebody that I follow a lot and he talked about it he was giving a speech that he used to hang out with, with people that were older in their life later on in their life so when he was at an airport airplane whatever he would look at somebody that was in the later years of their life and they, they would never say oh I wish I made an extra hundred thousand dollars they would never say that or I wish I, I did you know they would always look back and the things I wish I would have spent more time with the kids I wish I would have taken more trips um, I wish I would have maybe risked that and, and gone after that instead of being scared. So, you know, in, in, the, in the business world and what we're trying to do, that, that stuff that we think matters, I mean, it does matter because you've got to pay the bills, right? You've got to provide for your family. I get that, okay? But, but we can't make that the most important thing because at the end of our life, we're going to look back, and if we made that the most important thing, then what happens is we're, we're going to miss out on a ton, we're going to miss out on a ton of things. If you make that the most important thing, I mean, it kind of gets me emotional thinking about it. If, if that's your focus, like, oh, I want to make this much money, and you come home and you're just focused, you're focused on that, but then you're, whew, I get emotional. Your boy's out there playing basketball by himself. And you make the choice, oh, I think I can just make a few more calls. I think I should just check my email one more time. And you miss out on that opportunity to say, you know what, this is more important right now because I had the daytime to get it done and I needed to get it done there, maybe I didn't this and that, and you miss out playing hoop with your boy, before you know it, your boy's 18, 19, is out of the house, and you're like, darn it, I should have played more games of horse. A goal, I mean, it, it could be a goal to make a million dollars, but, there, but there's, there's people out there that are making a million dollars, well, there's a lot of people making a million dollars that their life is completely screwed up. Comple but there's also people that are making a million dollars out there and they have an incredible life. And they're being incredible husbands, you know, they're living a healthy life, they're doing amazing things. So sometimes what we do, I think we have a tendency to also look at money the wrong way. We say, oh, well, if I make this much money, 
Okay, this is where some scared, this is where that story thing comes up. Oh, if I go for this much money, this is what this means. That my other life or my lifestyle or my family is going to suffer, right? So then what we do is we get scared and we don't set the expectations of the, buy, the, the, the bar high to make more money because we feel that it's going to infiltrate in the other areas of our life and we don't want to do that. Does that make sense? But if you have a clear plan and a clear system to make sure that doesn't happen, you can go for that, that high income because you got everything kind of under control because you've identified the key areas and you know what you need to do. If, if you have no idea, if you're like, I just want to make a million dollars and I'm going to do whatever the heck it takes to get that done, well, yeah, that's a disaster because you can make a million dollars and then you forget about your wife or forget about the kids and now you got a million dollars.